Let's start this lecture by doing an experiment together. Imagine we have the setup. On the bottom, we have a blue magnet, and on the top, we have a red magnet, which is a little pointy, so it's stronger and more localized. This setup is known as the stern golek experiment. However, instead of talking about the results, let us do the experiment together. If we were to send the magnet straight through, it would take a straight path. If this magnet was vertical, the pointy red attractor would diffract the red, so it would go to the bottom of our detector. If the same magnet was flipped, this time the red would attract the blue and the magnet would go up in our detector. Now, if we let random mistake at all on this magnet, so we can flip it as such, let's see what we will see. We observe a straight line. This is a predictable result, obviously. Now we let us implement electrons instead of magnets. Let's see what will happen if we send this electron. It goes towards up, so perhaps electrons are magnetic. Now let's send a random electron. Well, this time this electron went down. If we do this process and send random electrons, this is what we are going to get. How? Well, let us not worry about how, but let us define certain things from this experiment that we have just conducted. So, electrons have a property. Sometimes they are going towards up and then down. So, let us call this property spin of an electron. It can either go up, the spin, or it can go down, spin down, and nothing in between, because this is what the experiment's result tells us. Well, why are we calling it spin? Are electrons spinning? Well, no. It's a bad terminology. However, they act as they are spinning. So that is the reason why we call the property spin. This is the essence of quantum computing, where this quantum mechanical phenomena is used. Popular science content, videos, articles, and documentaries mistakenly tell that sometimes these quantum mechanical objects can be in a superposition of spin up and down at the same time. If we say spin up equals zero and spin down equals one, then sometimes this system is both a one and a zero. How weird quantum mechanics is, yes? Well, absolutely not. A measurement of this quantum mechanical object might yield one and zero. Mathematically, these linear solutions when added is also a solution to the wave function. However, we do not know what this object is before we measure it. More about the wave function and what it means later. The reason why this experiment was done by you and me is that it makes us catch a glimpse of the world of quantum measurements. This is a window that we will peek through and think, not learn some formulas, but think together. The wave function is what we use all the time in quantum mechanics. It doesn't mean anything physically. However, when we take the modulus squared, it becomes a probability density. For the ones that don't know what the modulus squared is, it's a simple mathematical operation that we do on the wave function, and this operation is purely a postulation. It's very important to know that the wave function is not a description of the quantum object. It's a prescription for what to expect when we make a measurement on that object. It's not a real entity and has no physical meaning. This is crucial to understand. We have our wave function. This is not the particle being smeared out in space, by the way, nor the particle itself. It's, again, a purely mathematical entity with no physical meaning. It is the all the possible outcomes of measurements. This wave function, when measured, loses its meaning, as now we are capable of knowing where the electron is. So the function collapses. This interpretation is named the Copenhagen interpretation, as this was formulated by the Danish scientist Niels Bohr and his colleagues. However, the fact that the collapse happening is not in the original interpretation formally. The fact about the wave function being a prescription is the interpretation. Wave function is not what the quantum mechanical object is. I want to signify this more. It is how it acts. It's not a definition, but a model. In popular science articles, videos, and documentaries about quantum mechanics, the main narrative is that it's weird, 
Quantum objects can be both waves and particles at the same time, and so on. These things are nothing but misunderstandings, even worse, if I were to be harsh, intended misinformation for clicks. The reason for this is, as we've seen, these quantum mechanical phenomena is not the definition of the object, it's a prescription of it. It is not a property of the matter, it is what we observe. Once we observe it, our knowledge about its position changes. Hence, the wave function, which is not a real entity, collapses. So the wave function can be understood as our mind postulating. And when we get the answer, we know the answer. Let's imagine that we do an experiment. I will not tell you what we are doing, but I will show you the result of our actions. We do our magic experiment and we get a result around the center. If we repeat our magical action and get another result, it will be around the center again, with the highest probability. So if we repeat it many times, we might get a result such as the following. If we were to plot this as a probability curve, we would get a function to depict this as the following. Let us even pick a Greek symbol for our function and name it the action function. Now the question is the following. Does this function phi tell us anything about what our action was? No, it does not. Same as the wave function not telling us anything about the electron. The action function that we have just defined does not tell us what the action is. It can tell us how it behaves. However, it is not the action itself. The mystery behind this matter is simply a misunderstanding of it and mystifying it. Furthermore, on the superposition principle, the linear solutions when added together is also a solution to the wave function. Now, we know that superposition doesn't constitute anything. Wave function is purely a mathematical entity with no real basis. Hence, for the quantum object is not both dead and alive. Sorry, popular science media. The cat is not both until we measure it. Our knowledge about the cat is both. We do not know the cat before we measure it. And the wave function only does guesswork about it before we do. If we measure a system, we will detect A state with probability X and B state with probability Y. It is not both states at the same time. It is both probable to be observed and detected. And there is nothing magical about this matter. <laughs>